Welcome to my review for Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC Crown Tundra Pack 2. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the aspects of the Crown Tundra DLC, and at the very end of the video, I'm going to be giving it a final rating and comparing it to the Isle of Armor DLC and the main game. Before we start today's video, you guys should subscribe down below. There's only 1% of people that watch my videos that are actually subscribed and you guys have been showing a lot of support lately for the Pokemon videos especially and I am really excited to give you guys more content if it is what you want. So please subscribe down below. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is all of the complaints that people might have had with the DLC. Um, the biggest complaint I hear is probably... Uh, a lot of people like complaining complaining about the follow animations and I think that was more of a problem in the DLC pack 1 because it was kind of jarring like seeing all the different follow animations how they weren't really realistically like following like your Pokemon would get stuck really far behind and then it would catch up and then it would get stuck really far behind again but I think in the crown tundra when you realize um, when you have a lot more Pokemon especially legendary Pokemon following you I think it actually does look a lot better especially because in past Pokemon games they wouldn't even walk at all they would just be standing there and that kind of did ruin some of the immersive aspects of it especially when if you ever do the quest in crown tundra where you have to find the footprints um verizion cobalion and terrakion will actually appear in the overworld and they won't just be standing there like still not moving they will actually be walking around and moving and actually interacting if you ever like whistle or do that stuff so i think that's really cool i think Especially when you have your legendary Pokemon that you might have caught from the max lair uh, follow you around. Um, you can just see how big they are compared to your character's model. And I think that's really, really cool the way they did it. They could have just, obviously it's not the most perfect thing that they could have done. Um, there's obviously lots of other ways they could have implemented it. But I'm pretty happy with the follow animations. I don't think there's really anything to complain about right there. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the main story aspect. Um, obviously the main story aspect, uh, you could count the Regis and the other and the three legendary um, Pokemon that you have to find the footprints with, but I'm only going to be counting the main part about Cal Calyrex, which is technically the main part of the story. Um, I think it was overall pretty decent. It's not obviously not the best. It wasn't going to be super comprehensive because unlike the main game where it was very comprehensive because I say this is more about exploring the Crown Tundra and finding out like the different Reggie secrets and stuff like that. But I would say the Calyrex story definitely wasn't bad. Um, I think they implemented many different aspects pretty well. Um, they, I especially liked how they actually implemented some of the Pokemon like last year in Spectre are actually like, running around and you get to fight them. You don't get have to just like, oh, I'm going to catch them the first time I see them. Or, and they're actually pretty d difficult to catch and I really liked how you had to kind of sort of travel up the big mountain and go through that maze and it w I just really thought that going through I felt like the characters especially like Peony and Peonia even if they're not really aspects of the main story I felt like they were characterized a bit more they had facial expressions unlike so many characters did in the original Pokemon Sword and Shield and I think they did that a lot better obviously with Isle of Armor as well but I'm really happy that Crown Tundra kept up that tradition right, by actually including characters that do have some life in it. So I would rate the main story a decent 7 out of 10. It wasn't bad. It wasn't the most spectacular thing ever. But I don't really think there's anything that you can really complain about it. The only thing you could really do is add some extra bits to it or make it a little bit longer. The next part I want to talk about is the Regis. I really, really liked the implementation of the Regis. Especially that you didn't just have to like find them you actually had to solve a puzzle and the puzzles weren't apparent obviously if you knew what to do they were pretty easy but for example i got stuck on the registeel one for a while because since i did the i think i did the registeel last out of the three regis and um the other ones were pretty obvious uh the first one you needed an everstone but that was there, there's only really one item that does that so i i really knew that one already but the second one i did was regi I, regice and you needed to bring a cryogonal so I had assumed that you needed to bring a Pokemon that made noise. So I kept looking for like Krikatot and all the other Pokemon like Chata, all of them Pokemon that made noise until I finally figured out I just did was doing random things and I figured out oh all you have to do is whistle. So the puzzles were actually really inventive. Um, I like that they didn't they made them like separate caverns that you had to find and that they were in these hidden remote locations 
um, they added the themes, which was very cool. I'm glad they didn't just have the uh, legendary, the regular battle theme, and the legendaries just standing there. I think adding the battle themes really helped the actual immersive aspect of it. And the Reggies, I would definitely say, um, I kind of, it's kind of hard for me to say, especially because you can't get Reggie Gigas unless you have all five Reggies. But you can also can't get all five Reggies unless you have all nine because you're you can't get there's no other way to get um the fifth reggie you have to either choose between reggie jago or reggie lecky i chose reggie lecky and i'm still trying to find someone to trade the actual reggie drago with because um you will need nintendo online which i do feel like is a slight misstep i feel like obviously there are version exclusives but for this especially if you're going to hold a pokemon like reggie Gios, i think there should have been a way to actually um get Reggie Drago in the game whether that be to face like a challenge or something else or to fight a certain amount of Pokemon or something uh, that's the only real misstep I think is in the Reggies um, everything else the Reggie aspect was really really cool I'm glad they actually put this in the game um, they could have just not put it in the game and we probably wouldn't have thought about it but adding this really really helps the DLC a, a lot um, the next thing I want to talk about is the Galarian birds this is probably one of, if not the best aspect of the Crown Tundra. Uh, the Galarian birds were very, very cool, especially when you think about how they were actually implemented and how legendaries have been implemented in the past. Um, usually for legendaries like that, they would flee to different areas and all you would have to do is like get through a cave similar to like the Elite Four in traditional Pokemon games, where all you would do is just go through the Elite Four cave and then they would just be standing there and you catch them instead you have to do some sort of a little puzzle that represents their personality um in this for example when you go to catch articuno articuno uh plays a game with you where it duplicates itself and then it um duplicates itself into three and you have to figure out which one is which because that's his personality uh when you're going to catch zapdos you have to chase it around and then it eventually will stop if you chase it for long enough and it's curious to why it's chasing you so it will stop and look at you uh, Moltres is ferocious so it will attack you aggressively if you stop if you get in front of it um, I think that was really cool they, the new theme I really like their battle theme it's kind of like ooh. the first time you hear it you're probably not gonna like it as much but I recommend listening to it multiple times because the second and third time I listened to it I found myself really really liking it I think it's the best theme that they added to the DLC and I'm really happy that they get like they could have just given it a regular random legendary theme or a red and blue legendary theme but I'm really glad they made it sort of like oh we're adding a Galarian theme because these are the Galarian legendary birds um, it just seems like they put a bit more effort into it which I'm really happy that they did that um, the Galarian birds just overall were a very very a neat aspect that they didn't have to add but I am interested to see um, I think the only thing they could have added Otherwise, with the legend, with the birds, was the tree. They could have added some more lore to why the tree is there. They don't really explain it. It's just kind of a big tree. Uh, the, the birds meet up there. Uh, you go trigger the cutscene, and that's it. So I think I would rate the legendary birds aspect of Contendra a solid eight out of ten. Not really much you could have improved there, except maybe add some more lore with why they're there and or how they came to be. Obviously, you just say they're legendaries, they're Galarian legendaries, and that's kind of the explanation. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the next thing, the next thing I want to talk about is the Max Lair. Um, I like that they actually implemented the um, story part of that. They explained why all the legendaries are there uh, because of Solgaleo or Nebi or L L Lunala. They actually brought them all here through the ultra, through the, through the wormholes. Uh, they explained that at the very very end, especially if you go get the um, in the little Cosmog in the house in snow point town if you actually go there and talk to the grandma that has it um she'll tell you that since since cosmog has appeared all these legendaries have appeared i think it makes a lot more sense for them to say that rather than just oh all these legendaries are just gathered here in the max layer um that makes a little more sense in continuity aspects um the max layer is it's pretty fun i think it has one great thing over everything else is that it actually has um no shield on the um, Dynamax Pokemon. That's probably the most obnoxious uh, mechanic they added for the actual Dynamax battles. It just made them not fun because no matter how much damage you do, you're always gonna get past the shields. So basically every battle is going to take the same amount of time and it just made some of them unnecessarily hard. You basically just had to bring a bunch of defensive Pokemon and hope the CPUs always attacked. Like, there was really no point in buffing your stats because you just wanna get to the shield as fast as possible. 
especially since you could only break a maximum number of two shield points and that's only with a um dynamax move which meant especially against the five star ones where they had like five points of shield it, you were only going to be breaking that shield in one turn if every single CPU attacked and not I know not everybody has the luxury of buying Nintendo online even though it is pretty cheap a lot of people don't have the money to buy that and I completely respect that and I understand why these five star battles might have been a little bit tougher on some than it would be for others um, I really think that's the only misstep that the Dynamax battles had in the original Sword and Shield but I'm really glad that they actually got rid of that in the um, Crown Tundra, especially for the legendary battles. And they made all of the legendaries and Pokemon in the dens a 100% catch rate, which is very good because even though they don't have the shields, it still does take a quite a while. Like I would say average 15 minutes, 15 to 10 to 15 minutes to finish a max layer battle. And it would be really, really disappointing, especially if the um, legendary just ended up not getting caught and you just have to do it again, especially because the if you do not do it with C if you do do it with cpus um the battles can still be tough if they don't attack uh, i would say attacking is always the best answer so if you get into a lobby if you do have the luxury to afford nintendo online i always recommend doing to doing the invite rather than doing don't invite because the cpus are not always are not very smart just to be frank but yeah the max layer battles were really really cool um i really enjoyed the max layer battles uh they're a lot better like i said than the regular battles and the story aspect is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that, I would give the Max Lair Battles a solid 8 out of 10. Similar to the birds, um, I really like it. I don't think there's really anything to complain about it. Uh, they added the sweet new um, outfits that you can get from Peonia here. And you can buy, they added obviously, I think the addition of all the new Pokemon is pretty cool. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about is something that you probably, or probably the thing that is least talked about, at least so far, is the Galarian Star Tournament. Um, I really do like the Galarian Star Tournament edition, uh, even though you might not really think about it that much because it wasn't the most advertised uh, thing in the in Galar, and especially in the DLC. I would say it's kind of like the back end of it. It's the very, very end that you might miss if you do not uh, really, really uh, look into it. But I really like the Galarian Star Tournament. Um, the inter you can get to see a lot of different interactions between characters that might not have interacted before or didn't quite have the dialogue that you wanted them to have. Uh, for example, um, I uploaded a video a few days ago of me completing the Galarian Star Tournament first time with Marnie. Uh, you got to see the... Um, Marnie's cute smile and some dialogue that you probably wouldn't have gotten in the normal games and you can do this with um, with any character all the gym leaders you can do it with Leon you can do it with even, even Mustard and Clara and I think that's something that the real the, the original Sword and Shield game really missed is the actual character interactions um, while you did have someone like Hop who was full of personality you also had a lot of characters that just had a personality but they didn't really change they weren't like dynamic characters or anything they didn't go through anything throughout the story they just kind of reacted the same way throughout the entire story uh nothing really changed with them and i think that was what really brought down the original game uh, i really do have to praise game freak for making the dlc's characters actually have some life and even pumping life and, and actually like having some of the characters from the original game appear in the DLC and giving them some more dialogue lines. They didn't have to do that, but I think it just makes it overall, the characters seem more lifelike rather than them just being there as like gym leaders or that don't interact with the trainer at all. So I will give the Crown Tundra a lot of credit for the Galarian Star Tournament. I think the Galarian Star Tournament is pretty solid. Um, I wish there was like, I guess there isn't really anything that you can really do um, before you finish like after like a big reward i would say maybe if they had brought in like trainers from other regions obviously this is just a like a super wish that would never happen but if they brought in like some rant like if once you completed all the galarian star tournaments like a, tr a special trainer would appear or something like that similar to what they did in black and white 2 but obviously that's just a super wish that would never happen and i don't feel there's any reason to complain that it didn't happen uh i think i would rate the galarian star tournament obviously off I think I would rate the Galarian Star Tournament an 8 out of 10 as well. So now, my final review for the Crown Tundra DLC is a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think the only things that you really could have included is when you fight certain legendaries, when you fight the, uh, the three 
dogs from the Unova region when you fight the, the Iron Wheel Pokemon, etc. The Grass Wheel Pokemon, Virizion and Cobalion and Zerakion. Uh, they could have included themes for them, they just have them as regular encounters, which I think was kind of lame. It just ruined the immersive aspect to it. You're just, it just seems like you're battling another regular Pokemon that you just found. So I think they could have added battle themes for that. Um, obviously, it's just a wish list, but if they had added some kind of special reward for once you beat every trainer in the Galarian Star Tournament or partnered with every trainer in the Galarian Star Tournament. Um, but other than that, I don't really think there's anything that I would want them to change or add to this. Um, but yeah, I think uh, other than maybe giving you an option to actually catch Rage Drago, other than that, I think the DLC was pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, definitely, I enjoyed it a lot more than the Isle of Armor DLC, and I think the Max Lair contributes a lot to that because there is a lot to do after once you finish the main story aspect. For the Isle of Armor, the only real thing to do after you finish the story was get all the Clara, do all the extra battles like with Mustard and Clara, and maybe if you get enough points, actually do the Daisy battle. Um, but other than that, there wasn't really much replayability. Um, comparing it to the original game, I'm gonna harsh on the original game a little bit much here, but I think the Crown Tundra DLC was loads, loads better than the original game. Uh, I have lots of complaints with the original game, especially the actual pacing of it. I think Crown Tundra, Crown Tundra was very good also because it allowed freedom of what you want to do. Uh, once you completed the first aspects of the Cal Calyrex story, you could either do Calyrex story, you could do the Regis if you wanted, you could go find the Galarian birds if you wouldn't wanted. There were so many options of which pathway you wanted to take. I think that's really cool because yeah, as a Pokemon trainer, going to this foreign land, right, you're going to want to do whatever you want, right? There's there's not going to just be one path that you take and then everything opens up, right? You should be able to explore the island at your own leisure, especially since it's a DLC. It's kind of like a vacation package. Like, imagine you're going to an island. You're not just going to take one pathway to find one Pokemon and then always take that pathway whenever a new trainer comes to that island, right? You're going to want to let them explore it at their own leisure, go around, do whatever they want. And I think the uh, main game didn't really leave much aspect for that. Uh, the routes were not great. I think it's a lot like if they're going to implement like a wild area type thing I think they should have definitely included it in the routes and not just the um, they tried to make the routes a little too traditional Pokemon but then they added in the aspect of the wild area so it just made them seem very very short um, the routes weren't as detailed as the wild area the routes were very very basic I would say if that's the right word for it um, the characters were not as expressive as they were in the uh, these two DLCs the characters were loads better and I think everybody realized it as soon as you started playing the Isle of Armor that the characters were a lot lot better than they actually were when you actually played the um, the normal sword and shield game uh, and when I talk about pacing there aren't that many stop cutscenes like there were in the main game and I'm talking about hop specifically uh, it made me dislike the character of hop because you would just always get stopped to do a cutscene and that's, that would happen over and over throughout the game and just overall ruin the pacing of the game uh, which is why I think playing Sword and Shield again is really really unfun it's not as great it's not a game that you really want to replay especially if you're just replaying it for fun you're probably going to only want to replay if you're doing like a nuzlocke or something else like that that will actually spice it up otherwise it's going to be a pretty pretty boring experience and really really slow experience because there are times during the game where you rush through and then there are times where you run at like a snail space getting through the game because of all the cutscenes and all the time hop stops you but comparing it to the regular game, I would say it is at least three times as good. Um, the Isle of Armor, I think I enjoyed that more than the regular game. But uh, I would say that the Crown Tundra is definitely better than the Isle of Armor and the actual Sword and Shield game. But uh, my overall review of it, of the original game, I never really made a review. But I would say the original game is a 6. I would say the Isle of Armor is a 7. And I would say the Crown Tundra is an 8.5. But um, I'm really interested to see you guys' opinions. Obviously, Sword and Shield gets a lot of hate. I think a lot of the hate is unnecessary because I, I do, or I'll say I think a lot of the hate or criticism is actually valid. I don't think everybody's just saying it just to hate on Pokemon. I think a lot of the criticism is deserved because it does seem like a rushed game at times. Especially when you're talking about the textures, Every, obviously everybody makes memes about the tree. But I do think it really is a problem that the tr like stuff like the tree, uh, people just meme it, but then they don't actually take it seriously. Like, um, textures should be better than that. I do agree with that, especially on a 
next gen console like the switch but i think a lot of the criticism that sword and shield gets is unnecessary i think it's just people wanting to complain so i, I think it's a decent po i think it's a it's a good pokemon game it's good for what pokemon is um i think when you look back at it though that it is definitely not as fun to play through as a crown tundra dlc is i think if um crown tundra and isle of armor were not dlc and they were actually included in the original game i think this would be one of the regarded as one of the best pokemon games especially because it would all be considered post game and post game is something that people take for granted i'll say people really 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 like post game so if you have a post game as good as this was with the isle of armor and crown tundra dlc i think that um sword and shield would definitely be regarded as one of the best pokemon games but i'm interested in seeing what you guys think about the, the uh, crown tundra dlc overall i think the reception is pretty good and i'm happy that it's good because that means we are going to be going into the next pokemon games Obviously, people are speculating that there might be a DLC 3. I do not think there is going to be a DLC 3. I don't really think that makes any sense. Uh, they would have definitely announced it because I'm pretty sure they are either working on Gen 4 remakes, which is probably the most obvious thing. Uh, people, I'm not super hyped for Gen 4 remakes. I am, but I'm not. Um, I'm really hyped for any Pokemon game at this point because I actually never played through Gen 4, which means that I will be getting to go through Gen 4 for the first time. And if that happens, I will be excited for that. Um, I don't think they'll do Gen 9. Obviously, there's speculations about let's go, um, and let's go, next go Johto, and I would actually be really happy with that because I never played through uh, Gen 2 either, and I would say that even though this might be super unpopular, the let's go era of, like, Pokemon stuff, especially with the shiny hunting, the shiny hunting was really fun in let's go because it was really, really, um, easy to do, and anybody could do it. It felt a lot, a lot more applicable. The shiny rates were higher. But I'm, I, I plan on making a video on why I think Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee were actually really good games, and especially really good Pokemon games, and I would not be opposed, obviously a lot of people would be, but I would not be opposed to seeing a Let's Go Johto or a, a Let's Go Marill or something like that. People are, obviously people don't know what the Pokemon would be for that, but I am not opposed to that in the slightest. But I plan on making a video on that in the future, but I want you guys to leave in the comments down below what you guys think. Uh, this is my first ever actual official review video for any type of Pokemon game or Pokemon thing. Um, tell me what you guys enjoyed about this video, what you guys didn't like. If there's anything that you guys want me to go more in-depth on in the future, let me know now in the comments below. But without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video.